When looking to buy a product or service, have you ever been influenced by the price? If you have, you aren't on your own. The price elasticity of demand, which is often referred to as PED, provides a business with a measurement of exactly this. How the demand for a business's goods alter after a change in price. Let's have a look into the price elasticity of demand in more detail and calculate some worked examples. In business, there are many factors which influence the demand for products. However, one of the most influential factors is price. But how does a business know how influential price is going to be when it comes to the demand of their products? This is through a concept known as the price elasticity of demand, which is used by business owners and marketing managers to calculate the relationship between the price they charge for the business's goods and the related demand for these goods from the business's target market. For example, Imagine a product that you purchased on a regular basis was increased by 10%. Would this stop you buying it in the future? Now imagine that same product was on sale and was reduced by 20%. How would this influence your buyer behaviour and that of the business's other customers? This is what the business needs to calculate before making any decisions about changes to the selling prices of their products. The business needs to know whether its products are elastic or inelastic and how a change in the selling price will impact demand from its customers. An elastic product means that they are more sensitive to price changes. In other words, the change in demand is higher than the change in price. For example, if a business raised the selling price of its products by 10% and the demand decreased by more than 10%, for this scenario we'll use 12%, but it could actually be any decrease over the percentage price rise which in this case was 10%, then this product would be classified as an elastic product. Therefore, the business may decide not to increase the selling price because the total sales revenue would decrease overall. Even though the selling price per unit is higher, less people would be buying the product after the change in price. However, this all changes when a business is looking at decreasing the price of an elastic product. If the price of an elastic product was decreased by 10% instead, demand would actually increase by more than 10%. Again, we will use 12% for the sake of this scenario. This means that total revenue would increase overall, even though the revenue per sale would be reduced. This is because the percentage demand has actually increased more than the percentage price change, meaning more customers will be purchasing the business's product. So to summarize, if a product is price elastic, Total sales revenue will go down if the selling price is increased. But if the selling price was reduced, total sales revenue will go up. Essentially, changes to the selling price have the opposite impact on total sales revenue. Examples of products with elastic demand include chocolate bars, because customers have so much choice in the market and often little loyalty to a specific chocolate bar. Therefore, if a brand decided to increase its prices of a particular chocolate bar, let's say for example a Mars bar or a Snickers, it's very likely that a higher percentage of customers would buy a competitor's chocolate bar instead. Now, it could be argued that petrol as a commodity is price inelastic. However, individual petrol stations set their own prices, which makes the petrol they sell to customers price elastic, as there's many alternative options and if a competitor is selling petrol for 10% cheaper locally, it's likely that many customers will switch to this competitor. Popular supermarket products such as milk, bread, fruit and veg are also price elastic, as competition is so intense in the industry and customers have lots of choice. Therefore, if a supermarket such as Tesco raise their prices on these popular and everyday items by 20%, it's likely that demand would decrease dramatically as customers look to their local competitors for alternative options. In comparison, an inelastic product means that they are less sensitive to price changes. In other words, the change in demand is lower than the change in price. Therefore, if a business which sells inelastic products was looking to increase the selling price by 10%, the change in demand would be less than 10%. For this scenario, we'll use 5%, but it could be any decrease under the percentage price rise of 10%, and this would make the product price.
price inelastic. This is good for business, as overall sales revenue would therefore increase, because the change in selling price doesn't significantly impact demand. However, the option of reducing prices to increase sales would not actually be very effective. The business could decrease the selling price of an inelastic product by 10%, but demand is likely to increase by less than this. Let's again use a 5% change in demand for this scenario. This would be bad for business, as total sales revenue would be lower. This is because the percentage increase in demand is lower than the percentage price decrease. So to summarise, if a product is priced inelastic, total sales revenue will go up if the selling price is increased. But if the selling price was reduced, total sales revenue will also go down. Essentially, changes to the selling price have the same impact on total sales revenue. Therefore, reducing selling prices isn't an effective method for inelastic products. Examples of products with inelastic demand include train tickets for commuters who rely on the train to get to work, especially for those who work in London. If a ticket price were to increase, it's very likely that demand will only fall by a marginal amount, as it is a necessity and alternatives for commuting into London during peak hours are limited. Apple products such as the iPhone are also inelastic, as they have several USPs such as Apple's operating system, which is only available with Apple products, and Apple also have very strong levels of brand loyalty from their customers. Tickets for high-end sporting events such as Premiership Football and Formula One are also inelastic, as fans are committed to their respective teams and have high levels of loyalty to the sport, which means any price rise would have to be deemed as completely unreasonable for demand to reduce to a higher percentage than the price increase. But how can you tell if a product is elastic or inelastic? Well, it's all to do with its elasticity rating, which always starts with a minus. But if a whole number follows a minus sign, for example the number 1, 2 or 3, then it means the product is price elastic. However, if the number which follows a minus sign is below 1, for example as low as 0.1 or as high as 0.9, then the product is price inelastic. To calculate the elasticity of a product, a formula is used. It is the percentage change in quantity demanded divided by the percentage change in price. Let's have a look at a worked example. Imagine you are the manager of a local fast food restaurant and you are considering increasing the price of a popular burger from £5 to £5.50. At the current price of £5, the quantity demanded is 1,000 units but at the revised price of £5.50, demand reduces to 925 burgers. To help you make the decision, you need to calculate the price elasticity of demand to clarify if this would be a good business decision. You can do this in three simple steps. First, you need to calculate the change in demand as a percentage. Now, the current demand we know is 1,000 units, and the demand at the revised price would be 925 units, this leaves a difference of 75 units, or in this case, 75 burgers. You divide this difference of 75 units into the current demand of 1000 units, then multiply the answer by 100, and you have the percentage change in demand, which in this scenario is 7.5%. Step two is to calculate the change in price as a percentage. The current price is five pound, and the proposed change is to increase the selling price to £5.50, which is a difference of 50p. You're going to divide this difference of 50p into the current selling price of £5, then multiply the answer by 100, and you have the percentage change in price, which in this scenario is 10%. Now we have completed steps 1 and 2, having calculated the percentage change in demand and the percentage change in price, we can now move on to the third and final step which is to use the elasticity formula we learnt previously to calculate the elasticity rating by dividing the percentage change in quantity by the percentage change in price, which in this scenario is 7.5% divided by 10%, equaling 0.75, which would be represented as minus 0.75. Therefore, the price is inelastic as the number is below 1 and the percentage change in demand is less 
than the percentage change in price. This means it would be a good business decision to increase the selling price of the burger to £5.50 as total sales revenue is likely to increase even though the business will lose a small percentage of its customer base for this particular product. So that's it, price elasticity of demand explained. A very useful calculation which supports a business to make decisions about the selling prices of their products and the potential impact this will have on demand and total sales revenue. I hope that's helped and if you want to learn more about business, don't forget to subscribe to Two Teachers on YouTube to see our weekly video uploads on key business topics. Thank you for listening and all the best.